we have recently learned over the past couple of years um, that um, a couple of things. So one, we needed to learn a little bit more about SUDEP. And so as we were investigating SUDEP, we were looking for biomarkers. So one thing that we found is in our animal model, our animals um, all have spontaneous recurrent seizures and they all die a sudden and expected death. But interestingly, they all die at different ages. So some might die, you know, um, at postnatal day 20 and others might um, survive for several months. And what we wanted to do is take age out of the equation and monitor all the animals and say, okay, are there any changes that happen within each animal right before they die? And could we use those changes as a biomarkers to predict how close you are to death? And that's the first question that we had. And so we found that sleep actually worsened about two weeks before all the animals died. Now we know outside of the field of epilepsy that if you have sleep problems or um, sleep deficiency, right? So this is maybe not sleeping many nights in a row, or it might be just not getting optimal sleep every night, you know, for chronic periods. Um, so if you have chronic sleep deficiency, we know outside the field of epilepsy that that's associated with um, cardiac irregularities, vascular problems, respiratory problems. Um, 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 it can cause things like hypoxia and it's associated with early mortality. And so that's why we wanted to look at sleep first to see whether there was a sleep deficiency that might increase the probability of uh, death or early mortality in the animal models. And we found that we found that they had increased bradycardia so they developed this uh, chronic intermittent bradycardia. They had chronic intermittent hypoxia and they had, um, they started to have more apnea events. So in addition to the sleep problems, they had all these other cardiorespiratory things. So that was the first thing that we discovered. Now bringing orexin into the story, orexin is a really key integration neuropeptide. And it, as I mentioned before, it takes in a bunch of signals, uh, behavior, environment, and physiology, and then it acts to interpret those signals and then adjust the body's responses to things, either compensatory or pathologic. It's still not really um, fully understood. But what we found is, um, or what is known is that orexin projects to many respiratory control centers um, in the brainstem and in the hypothalamus and in the periphery. It controls uh, or projects to and can regulate the gain and, and just do these fine little adjustments for respiration. It could be inspiration, timing, expiration, timing. It's involved in apnea um, and airway patency. In terms of heart rate, it can cause, it can promote tachycardia um, by talking to the sympathetic system directly and indirectly, and it can promote bradycardia by um, talking to the vagal neurons. Um, so again, directly and indirectly. And so we wanted to see whether or not blocking the orexin receptors acutely. So just giving it 30 minutes before, and then looking at heart rate and respiration and hypoxia and hypoxemia to see whether or not acute treatment does anything to change any of these parameters. And um, because we know that these parameters change right before sudden unexpected death in our animal model. And so we thought that this was kind of like a really good rationale. So we blocked the orexin receptors acutely. And now this is taking it out. If we do this acute experiment, it's taking out the concept or the notion that improving sleep changed all of these parameters and fixed them. So this is outside of what sleep may or may not be doing. So we injected the animals 30 minutes later, we injected them with a vehicle and then we recorded a uh, heart rate and respiration and ox blood oxygen saturation. And then um, three days later, we injected them with a dual orexin receptor antagonist or a DORA. We blocked the orexin receptors. And then in that same animal, we looked at heart rate, respiration and blood oxygen saturation. And what we found is that within an animal, uh, DORA, um, it, stabilized heart rate. So some of the animals had really bad tachycardia and it actually brought their heart rate down. If you gave them a door, it brought it down again, supporting that notion that the orexin can be feeding into these systems. And, um, there were other animals that had bad chronic intermittent bradycardia. And if you gave them the block, the orexin signal, it actually increased the heart rate. And so it's, it's a, a very useful system in trying to, um, or that is involved in like changing um, our baseline levels. And because 
It was um, here orexin in epilepsy and in these, you know, pseudet mice. We are thinking that the orexin, there's severe seizures project there. Um, there's more of it. We think that the role of orexin is pathologic because when we block the orexin signal, it's fixing it. When we looked at apnea um, and we gave the Dora, it didn't prevent apnea in all of the animals, but it reduced the number of animals that had apnea. And in the ones that had apnea, it wasn't as severe. Um, so the number of apnea events that they experienced wasn't as severe. And so um, collectively, this would indicate that um, improving sleep, reducing seizures, and having cardiorespiratory kind of stabilization effects, administration or treatment with a DORA might end up being beneficial in SUDEP because those are all biomarkers that change two weeks before in our preclinical model. So one thing that we did is in animals that are at really high risk for SUDEP, um, you know, they're at an age where they're about to die. We uh, treated Dora daily, and we found that in these high risk populations, the daily treatment of a Dora actually increased longevity. So again, going to the uh, notion that it might be possible to, if you have some kind of um, pathophysiology that might increase your susceptibility to suit up or early mortality understanding what biomarkers might be existing. This is all preclinical studies, remember. Um, and then targeting those to help stabilize those may actually be beneficial in postponing longevity. But that's what we know so far. There's still a lot, I think, that we still need to figure out. 